in lush greenery. The culture of Crete, this beautiful and enchanting island, goes back over 4,000 years. And out of her affluent history come Cretans, a people known for their pride, hospitality, and sense of tradition. Thousands of kites soar from Cretan beaches into the sky, a sight one can admire only once a year on Easter Monday. This tradition, however, has nothing to do with the Christian holiday. What goes on here is a 200-year-old tradition acquired from the Turks, despite the fact that Turks represent mostly pain and suffering in the wild Cretan history. Even today, kiting is not without complication. Because of the sheer number of kites in the sky, it becomes inevitable that some of the kites will become entangled in the electric power lines and cause power disruptions. The inhabitants of Safakia are well known for being overly protective of their historical legacy. They are inclined to aggressively carry out a vendetta against anyone who disparages either their friends, relatives, or cultural heritage. However, on the nice side, the Tas Fakia Ensemble is famous for the Sirtos dance. Its roots reach to the religious rituals of the Minoi civilization. This Greek civilization, the oldest known, controlled the entire Mediterranean at the height of its glory. Their dominance ensured that their customs would remain intact to the present day. The only thing Cretans enjoy more than dancing is singing. The local men enjoy congregating in the tavern after dusk to sing a few tunes together. They do so out of the pure joy of singing, and their repertoire consists of traditional songs known as rizitik. The lyrics emit a feeling of those that came together for whatever reason, be it to celebrate or to mourn. The tune, therefore, depends on the occasion, funeral, christening, wedding, or during the war. In this particular instance, the reason for singing simply is the fact that a few good friends got together. One of the requirements when one has such a get-together is sufficient quantities of rakia. It is considered unacceptable to not have a shot of this potent grape alcohol when welcoming guests. You also need one after a good meal as a way to help your digestion. Rakia has a permanent place in every Cretan household, and most of the locals distill around 50 liters each year. A traditional method is used to check the quality of the spirit. A shot is thrown into an open fire, and its potency is judged according to the ensuing flames. Crete is inherently linked to the cultivation of olives. Many an expert considers Cretan olive oil to be the best in the world. Such a statement is hard to doubt, assuming all the local farmers make their commodity with the same care and skill of Mr. Minolis. A classical stone press drawn by a donkey is used. This too is one of the ancient Cretan traditions. The donkey must walk an admirable distance around the press each day. The donkey's toil is rewarded by its owner's final produce, one that would pass the strictest criteria for foodstuff labeled as bio. The regular consumption of the highest quality olive oil and excellent rakia are considered to be behind the renowned longevity of the Cretan people.
the shimmering sun is rising above Indonesia, and its golden rays are tickling awake the 21,000 islands on whose shores the Indian and Pacific Oceans meet. Most of these islands have a common dominant feature, towering volcanoes. For centuries, these impressive, massive structures have inspired great respect from the natives who call them fiery mountains or gamungapi and believe that ghosts dwell within. Here on Flores alone, there are 14 active volcanoes. Their frequent and unexpected activity contributes to the already unstable tectonic energy in the area. On the foothills of the Ili Mandiri volcano, among the biggest on the island, lies the town of Larantuka. In the past, this town was a significant crossroads in the trade of sandalwood between Timor and the surrounding islands. The most important area in this town is, and always has been, the port. It is a vital transportation hub that is able to connect all the surrounding islands. The traffic is so overwhelming, the boats seldom make it to the pier. It's not uncommon for passengers, together with their belongings, to be forced to skip from one boat to the next in order to reach the shore. Boats also serve as a ferry for the most commonly used means of transportation in Indonesia, the motorcycle. More than three million motorcycles are sold in Indonesia each year. Given the scorching sun, it's amazing that local bikers seldom ride without wearing a helmet. Apparently, they put safety first. Larantuka is the only place where one can find a boat connection to the Lamalera village on the island of Lembata. Lembata is widely known for their fishermen's unique technique, which dates back through antiquity. Lamalera. This village, evoking myths and fulfilling the longings of all travelers, lies an entire day's sail away. Its large bay, which is its sole access to the open sea, is at the heart of Lemolera. The survival of the local population is dependent on the shabby shelters for the boats that line the length of the island. Their crafts are invaluable to the local fishermen. They represent not only their livelihood, but also an important link to their ancestors. Here, when one happens to lose a boat, he stops all fishing and spends the next two months concentrating all his efforts on building a new boat. By the time the new boat is built, he will have used 18 mature trees. His only building tool will be a stone hammer, though he will not use any nails for the build. Getting the finished boat from its shelter, past the beach and into the sea, will require a superhuman effort. One must row the initial few meters to avoid the ever-present sandbanks before the engine can be started, if it happens to start. For the hunters, each attempt to bring this engine to life is a grand adventure. Unfortunately, there was only one single engine in the whole village. All the other boats rely on oars. It's time to sharpen the harpoons. When they finish, the sharpened spears are secured to a cord attached to a long bamboo rod. Great, the engine's finally coaxed into life. Now the fishermen will set off. Fishing in the local waters, however, is not a simple feat. One must be prepared to exercise infinite patience, as each hunt requires spending endless hours looking out for prey. The locals focus only on catching fish that move directly beneath the surface. As a result, it sometimes happens that they go without a catch for up to a few months at a time. This is an easy-going group. When there is no prey in sight, they simply enjoy a cigarette. But here, a cigarette is not quite what you'd expect. The locals wrap a bunch of dried local plants in paper and secure it with a thread. Sadly, today fate was not merciful, causing the hunters to acknowledge defeat. 
Now, after a seemingly endless wait, they set out for home. 